Will you please give a big hello to Alistair Campbell and Fiona Miller? Right, see what happens this time. Here we have the former political advisor, Alistair Campbell, and his partner and fellow journalist, Fiona Miller. Alistair's probably best known for having been Tony Blair's official spokesman at Downing Street. But he started his career on the Tavistock Times in the early 1980s, which is where he first met Fiona. Alistair eventually became political editor of The Mirror and started working for the Labour Party when Tony Blair became their leader in 1994. After the 1997 election, Alistair rose to become the government's director of communications and strategy, a position which some claim gave him more power than certain members of the cabinet. However, Alistair resigned in 2003, saying he wanted to spend more time with his three kids, Rory, Callum and Grace, and their mum, Fiona. Fiona had a long career as a journalist on the Daily Express, now writes a column for Education Guardian, with parenting and schools her particular interest. She also calls herself a fitness addict and swims every single day, including just before going into labour for each of their children. Fiona's also worked at number 10 as assistant to Sherry Blair and their great friend Tony, Prime Minister apparently, who has been trying for years to get them to marry. Up to now it's never happened, however, if they get to £1 million tonight, Alistair says he will propose to Fiona here <laughs> on air. There's no chance. That could be all. She may say no. <laughs> Tonight, their charity is the Leukaemia Research Fund. Guys, welcome. Um, why that particular charity? Uh, one of our closest friends, a guy called John Merritt, was a journalist with us quite a long time ago now. He died of leukaemia, and then a few years later, his daughter died, and his mother had also died of it even though it's not meant to be hereditary so when we started doing sporting events for charity it was the obvious one to go for fiona the proposal yes well, i mean I'm sorry he hasn't asked you yet yes i suppose i will <laughs> 15 um, questions away chris <laughs> how long how long have you two been together uh 25 years in this august coming up yeah and you've got three kids three kids yeah and a well, dog I've got just and got dog. a dog yeah well you might as well get married anyway might as well not well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you got to a million pounds, you promise. But I'm absolutely confident that I won't get to a million pounds. Don't be so. confident. <laughs> well, I am. That is the one thing I'm confident of tonight. But, but if you uh, win a million pounds, you will. Yeah, because I've, I've given you that promise. No, no, no but, but you promise. Yeah. And Fiona? She'll say no. <laughs> May well say no. <laughs> OK, here we go. 15 questions, three new lifelines, <clears throat> a possible one million pounds for their charity and their future together as man and wife. Remember, they only have to agree on all their final answers and the use of any lifelines including their phone a friend. Lots of luck, Alistair Fiona. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, question number one. For £100, you have all three lifelines. Here we go. Which of these might be used to clear a blocked sink or drain? Dropper, faller, dipper, plunger. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's a plunger. I'd go for D. Final answer? Yep. It's the right answer. You have 100 quid. <laughs> OK. Question number two is for 200 quid. In which board game could a player land on the go-to-jail square? Scrabble. Cluedo. Monopoly. Risk. Monopoly? It's the right answer. You've got 200 pounds. <laughs> Sorry. Clearly <laughs> disagreed. Question number three. 300 quid. Uh, tell us the answer. Plaster of Paris is most likely to be used to help which of these conditions? Broken leg. Influenza. Toothache. Migraine. Broken leg. Hey. Broken sure. leg. Yep. It's the right answer. You've got 300 pounds. <laughs> <coughs> OK, have a look at this. Question number four is for £500. In wine etiquette, which of these words means to be exposed to the air so as to improve flavour? Inhale, expel, gasp, breathe. D, breathe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's the right answer. You got 500 quid. You're one away from 1,000. Who 
Right, last point at which you could go home with nothing, which would be disastrous, but it wouldn't happen. And if it did, you could put a good spin on it. Um, <laughs> you have three lifelines untouched. I don't care tonight. Question number five is for £1,000. We will guarantee you a grand. Here it comes. Uh, LAX is the abbreviation for which international airport? Lagos, Lahore, Los Angeles, Larnaca. Uh, Los Angeles, see. The right answer, you got £1,000. <laughs> so, how are you, so how are you feeling, you two? You're very calm. Hmm. Are you normally calm, Fiona? I think so. I think the exercise probably helps to keep me calm. All that yoga, breathing, and and the, and the swimming. How, swimming. How yeah. far do you swim every day? A uh, kilometre. That's serious. Mm -hmm. This is true about you. you. Swam on the morning of yes. giving yep. birth each yep. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it all right? Did it make any yeah, difference? Yeah, it was fine. Uh, I don't think it did make any difference. No, but it certainly <laughs> keeps me fit. Well, it would. Yeah. Now, was he there for the birth? He was there for all of them. Yeah. Was he? He was very helpful and was calm. Was he a great comfort? Great comfort. Very calm. Yeah. It was good. He's a very good dad. Is he romantic? Not particularly, but he but does buy very good Valentine's Day presents. Yeah, very good like? presents. Well, last year he bought me a huge painting of two children in a swimming pool. I mean, it sounds odd, but it was a beautiful painting. Really fantastic. Takes up the whole wall. So that was. What did you get him then? Just me a mug. I bought him a mug. <laughs> <laughs> a mug. <laughs> yeah, was, there was a slight mismatch in the value of the gifts. It's true. But... Just a bit. <laughs> Is she romantic? Uh, she gives me nice mugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who says for your paintings? Yeah, I think she's uh, she has her moments. Yeah, but she's. Uh, I'd say that if there's one thing about her, it's it's not a romanticism, but a toughness that I like. Oh. Ah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. When you first got together, your eyes met across a crowded porter cabin. We were we were both trainees on the Mirror Group yeah. journalism training scheme in Plymouth, and the classes were all in a porter cabin. And that's where we met, and I was hugely attracted to Fiona because I didn't have a driving licence and she had a very nice little mini. Yeah, <laughs> your tinted windows, so it was handy. particularly... Yeah. That was it? That was a, certainly helped. OK, now listen, you have £1,000, that's good. Uh, that's guaranteed the minimum you go home with tonight for leukaemia research. Uh, you have all three lifelines. Uh, question number six is for £2,000. You might as well play this, you can't lose. Let's have a look and see what happens. Complete the title of the spoof TV chat show, Knowing Me, Knowing You, with Mrs Merton, Dennis Pennis, Alan Partridge, Edna Everidge. We're not big TV watchers, Chris. Yeah. We watch you, obviously. Well, obviously. <laughs> well, I don't think it's Edna Everidge. I don't know who Dennis Pennis is. Um... My instinct is Alan Partridge, but... Does he do ABBA? Does something to do with ABBA? Well, you're inscrutable, aren't you? I can't help you, can I? Um, you're looking inscrutable. That's the audience. Ask the audience, yeah. Ask the audience. Yep. I think so. Right, audience, on your keypads, let's try and get Alistair and Fiona up to at least £2,000. First lifeline they've needed tonight. Uh, this is the question. Complete the title of the <coughs> spoof TV chat show, Knowing Me, Knowing You, with dot, 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 question mark. Mrs Merton is A on your keypad. Dennis Pennis is B. Alan Partridge is C. Edna Everidge, D. All vote now. Ah. Oh. <laughs> we have actually had audiences with that sort of percentage and been wrong, but not very often. Mrs. Merton, uh, seven. Dennis Pennis, two. Ninety-one percent. Alan Partridge. Nobody in their right mind thinks it's Edna Everett. No. Well, we're right about that. So I think it's. We think. I think, it, I think we, it's C. We trust the British people. Do we? Yeah. Okay. Final answer. C. Alan Partridge. It's the right answer. You got two thousand pounds. <laughs> Okay, question number seven. You still have a 50-50. You still can phone a friend. Uh, this, I'm dying to know who your phone friends are. Uh, this is for £4,000. <laughs> Athena Russell is the granddaughter of which multi-millionaire? John Paul Getty. Bill Gates. Ted Turner. 
Aristotle Onassis. D. 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 Aristotle Onassis. Onassis. Sure? Yep. How'd you know? Because I know her mother was somebody else who <laughs> died. It was Aristotle Onassis' daughter, Christina, Christina Onassis. Final answer. D. Onassis. It's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> You have four thousand pounds. Question number eight is for eight thousand. Uh, you've still got two lifelines. You've got a phone friend and you've got a fifty-fifty. Have a look at it. You can double your money here. You would lose three thousand pounds if you gave me a wrong answer. Have a look at this question number eight of a possible fifteen. Which country launched the space station Skylab in nineteen seventy-three? Great Britain, France, United States, Soviet Union. Well, it won't be France, I don't think. It won't be the Soviet Union, I don't think. I'm not sure about that. Why? Because, well, how do you know it's not the Soviet Union? Because it's, it's not in Russia. Skylapsky. <laughs> I don't think that's true, though. Don't they have, no, they often launch their missions in... Hmm? The US rule is Apollo. Are they until when? I don't know. Skylab. Sounds sort of British, doesn't it? I, I think this is a friend one, don't you? I think it's too soon. 4,000. Fiona, where are you sort of inclining? I'm, I'm not quite sure where you're going on this one. I think, I think it's probably between Great Britain and the United States. What were the names of the Russian ones, though? Can you remember any of them? Mir. Mir, that's true. Yeah, that's not very, that's a very Russian word, isn't it, Mir? Any of the others? <laughs> Which country launched the space station Skylab in 1973? Great Britain, France, United States, Soviet Union. You've got a 50-50. Well, let's do 50-50. What, what are you going to say if it's, if it's Britain's state? I don't know, I'll think then. Think about it then. Yeah, we'll see which two come up. Maybe we know a friend who will definitely know it. Have you got a friend who will definitely know? <sighs> Probably. Hmm. Probably Ian. David. I would have thought Ian would be better for this one. Alistair, you're not pretending not to know this, just so you don't have to marry her, are you? <laughs> <laughs> No, I really want to get it, and I really want to get it without losing another lifeline. Did, did we launch any space stations in the 70s? In the space when was Apollo? Apollo was in... Hmm. When was the first man on the moon? 57, 70, early 70s. Phone a friend? Phone Ian, I think he'll know. Yeah, phone Ian Kennedy. OK, right, who's going to talk to him? Alistair? I'll talk to him. OK, right, well, phone Ian. Is Where he is the right he now? Guy? Is he the right I guy? I think so, yeah. Charlie? No, I think he's the right guy. Where is he at this moment? Uh, he's at home. OK. <laughs> Hello? Ian? Speaking. Chris Tarrant, good evening. Ah, oh, good evening. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Well, fine. You know when you volunteered to be a phone a friend? Yes, I did. And you thought it won't really happen? Uh, I did think it wouldn't happen. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it has. Oh, uh, no, it's OK. We've got Fiona and Alistair here. They're doing OK, actually. <coughs> they're stuck on one particular question. They say they're certain that you'll know. For £8,000. OK? OK. OK, right. Uh, next voice you hear will be Alistair's. Uh, he'll still tell you the question and the four possible answers. One of them is worth £8,000. OK. Alistair, lots of luck. Your time starts now. In which country launched the space station Skylab in 1973? Great Britain, France, the US, or the Soviet Union? Oh, boy. My... Do it again. Great Britain, France, US, or Soviet Union, which country launched the space station Skylab? 
My instinct tells me it's Skylab. It's France, but I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> this confuses even more. Skylab, why would the French call it Skylab? Well, what's your instinct then? Great Britain? Yeah. I don't think it's like a big thing, but I, th I think it's part of a British space programme. Fifty-fifty. Yeah. We should lose fifty-fifty as well. Well, otherwise we just guess. Okay, fifty-fifty. Okay, right. Uh, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Ooh. So Great Britain doesn't look too promising now. Go for France. Go for France. Go for France. Not United States. No. Final answer. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You had four thousand pounds. You've just lost three thousand oh. pounds. Fiona, Alistair. Never mind. Sorry I was going to be the best man in everything. I oh, know. <laughs> I got the hat. <laughs> right answer is United States. Oh. But you still go away with £1,000 for leukaemia research. Give them a big hand. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, what a shame! Quick, learn everything there is to know about everything, and then you'll be fully ready for classic Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Tonight at 9 on Challenge. Or just feel like a dunderhead like me.